that I don't hate Mary Jane Watson, but she has to be one of the worst additions to the game as a whole. For whatever reason, they decided to make her a journalist, borrowing a bit from Superman's gal. But where Lois Lane is focused, strong-willed, mannered, charismatic, confident, curious, from time to time you get to see her in another light where she's more vulnerable and nervous. MJ is just in your face and refuses to screw off. All because she's written into this weird modern trend of a woman that has to show signs of brash independence in order to be considered strong and any sort of reliance on a man will somehow make her lesser than one. They even give her her own missions that no one asked for. Literally no one. Not a single soul. It doesn't help these sequences are some of the most outright ridiculous ones in the game. At first it's not bad. She gets into a tough situation and with some luck and quick thinking, she uses the opportunity to her advantage. But then the game completely jumps the shark when she rips off her mask and underneath unveils her true identity. Solid Snake. Mary Jane Watson? Super spy. She outsmarts and outmaneuvers people who are more qualified than her in every field. What adds more to the event is the use of the sound discs Peter gives her to make these missions more believable. Did it though? I think it just made them worse. Like are these guards blind? Do they not see what direction the flying discs are coming from? On my first attempt I was trying to throw them as far away from the Sable agents as possible. It was obvious they'd see, but the game actually forces you to toss the discs in front of their faces because they're not standing close enough. What? What the fuck? The game actually encourages you to be as obvious of your presence as possible. Well, I was giving the game too much credit. And also, is no one going to run a sweep after hearing the ambient? Isn't anyone going to call them in once they're investigated? This isn't Metal Gear. What are you trying to do here? All of this just totally clashes with the rest of the game. How incompetent do you have to make the enemies just to make your character look better than she is? Stay ready. I've almost got the location. Sweep complete. Sector clear. From this point on, it gets worse with each mission. There is, however, one sequence where you get to play as Mary Jane that I like, and that's at the central station. Watching Spider-Man on Hero Duty from a civilian's point of view is awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. You never get to see Spidey from this perspective. It's a really nice attention to detail for all the bad these MG missions are. At least they gave us... Uh, uh, I saw that game. Clearly designing these wasn't your number one priority. And it shows. Hey. But at least it's representative of the portrayal of MJ as a whole. The writers doing everything in their power to prop her up while making everyone else less capable and inept. If there only was a way to name these type of characters. I bypassed the compressor. And if that's as far as the problem went, she wouldn't be that bad of a character. Alas, there's her relationship with Peter Parker. What's her deal? She wants to be his equal? constantly trying to prove her worth. You could say that's admirable, but for Mary Jane, I never cared for that aspect. And definitely not in the way it's presented here. She was never a literal equal to Peter. Dude, he's got spider powers. What do you have? Noisy discs? Stop! You serious? You guys can't be the same sort of equal. She can't fight her way out of situations. Her abilities as a fighter are very limited, and whenever the game tries to prove you otherwise, Is it's it only that much you? more embarrassing. You're lucky to be alive. Says the guy I saved five minutes ago. The amount of things she gets away with because of sheer luck and skills is ridiculous. Throw in as many one in a million maneuvers into the mix, cause I'm not buying it. If you think you're all that, Miss Watson, why don't you go fight bad guys? Let's see you get beat up and trampled after five seconds. The ability to claim oneself as independent does not make you formidable. I mean, what's Spider-Man doing in this game if she can do all the things he can? Break into Osborne's properties? No problemo. Infiltrate a Sable outpost? Please, she takes care of those for breakfast. Get into Tombstone's office? Oh look, the door, how convenient for her. Come out of nowhere and save the day? Yes. Did she have any plan? I ask this once again. If she's so amazing, 
why is Spider-Man here? The writers are constantly enamored with the idea that Peter needs her help, that she needs him as Spider-Man, and that he needs a team to help them out. On, Hold up, where did I see this before? You are not the Flash, Barry. We are. No sane person can look at what she's doing and take that seriously. Especially when you have to go to such lengths to rest your case, often at the cost of the webhead. MJ, if it weren't for you and Miles... Look at him, he can shoot bursts of webs left and right. The man is quick on his feet, reacting, stopping things from breaking apart. The sky could be falling and you can rely on this guy. But when it comes to making her look better, he suddenly loses control. Oh, he struggles to think fast, he's slow, he's too weak to hold up a platform. He's starting to swoon, he misses. Can you make up your mind? Does he have a your experience or not? Why must we make a character inconsistent to prop up another one? I have so many issues with the burning house apartment scene as is. Here, allow me to fix that for you. Better. I mean, this entire scene is just too good. Manipulative is the best I can describe it. Oh no, he's gonna die. Why does Miles leap in out of nowhere like he knows Spidey is going to shoot a weapon miss? Why is Spider-Man the only one weakened by the smoke while everyone else seems to be getting powered by it? The worst part about this whole affair is it could have been an awesome scene. Showing that Spider-Man 2 needs help and having Miles and MJ help him out and save him even? That's not a bad idea. Only not when it's rushed and slept together so evidently. But who cares, right? Because MJ comes to the rescue. This is not the Mary Jane I want to see. In the comics, she was always Peter's emotional crux, and even the movies, she was always what kept him going and truly made him complete in that way. That's the MJ I want to see. Those examples made her an equal to Peter in my eyes, only that's not the type of equal they want you to see here. And no wonder you end up with such a shallow character. I mean, let's see what she is without the tactical espionage action. Let's strip her down to... <laughs> let's strip her down to what she really is. At first, she seems pretty nice, outgoing, supportive, and even innocent. She's even interested in what he's currently doing, but still, nothing a regular friend wouldn't ask. And then it's all snark, jabs, negativity, arrogance, and degrading. We broke up because you wouldn't stop treating me like a baby. Don't do this, MJ. Don't do that, MJ. Blah 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 blah. I may not have super spider powers, but I'm not made out of glass. There's no chemistry, no history to work off of, not a lot of reasons for us to sympathize with her or the mean-spirited demeanor. Can Peter be a little worrisome? Yes. But why is she acting as if he obsesses over every little thing? She goes to dangerous places, meets dangerous people, her life is at a constant risk. I think it's fair to worry especially when you're just a human in very loud heels. The writers are obviously to blame as they expect the viewer to care about this relationship because it's Peter and MJ. You know they'll end up together so who cares right? They can do just whatever and they can still expect you to be invested. But are we ever given a real reason as to why we should care about the two other than we know they're a couple in the comics? No, no we are not. Which is why we needed more time with the pair talking about how much they care for each other. Just something so that we know the sentiment is mutual. Only thing Mary Jane is interested in is becoming work partners to do her reporter job better. So, are we partners now? Partner. 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 Hey, partners trust each other, Peter. Better chance we have to stop them. We. See ya, partner. It's pretty clear she's not interested in going back to their dating days at all. She's not interested, man. If anything, she seems to have a strange distaste when it comes to developing the relationship further. Do you remember why we broke up? Peter, on the other hand, he's trying. He may be at fault sometimes, but there's no denying he tries to atone for his shortcomings. When Parker screws up, we know he regrets it. Well, you know, she's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's complicated. No, it isn't. She's a... As for MJ, 
Whenever it comes to completing her end of the bargain, she always finds a way to make it about her personal space and how she wants Peter to accustom himself to her needs. She's like a praying mantis, and it doesn't help she sometimes looks like one. It's weird how they tend to fail to do these actors justice in video games. The two supposedly had a relationship prior to this one, sure. I would have liked to known what that was like other than we, we broke up because of you. I break up with you. Yeah, doesn't help. It's a bit of a shame the story doesn't give us anything to make the romance believable. There were so many opportunities to develop the relationship, like when Pete comes over to her house to cook and talk about the demons. I imagined an interesting conversation back and forth, a moment between the two perhaps about their past, a chance to talk heart to heart, get more personal. So when we finally get the scene, I can help but get annoyed by the fact the most we get out of it is the Great Dumpling Catastrophe. You're never gonna let me live that one down, are you? Nope. The Great Dumpling Catastrophe. I still can't believe they evacuated the entire building. I know, and in January too. <laughs> Your neighbors hated me. Yeah, they were pretty happy when we broke up. <laughs> yeah. So. Psych! Let's talk about what you found in Lee's office. Dumpling talk, so quirky yet so insignificant. I guess relatable too? Definitely a wasted opportunity. And then she makes a big ordeal out of Peter leaving his clothes on the kitchen floor as though it matters. Your clothes on the kitchen floor? Honey, where are my pants? <laughs> ha ha ha, so funny. Why is this still going? Why does it matter that his clothes are on the kitchen floor? Why? This isn't a great development for their relationship. Snorking about clothes on the kitchen floor? Really? What is she gonna complain about next, leaving the toilet seat up? They talk about becoming partners in their lines of work, but that's no different from any of their other interactions. You know, I hear some people say, oh, I like how relatable and down-to-earth their relationship is in the game, without realizing that this is the very problem. How is their relationship any different from your work partners or your friends? This is MJ and Peter we're talking about here. They are supposed to be the couple, the ones to have to hold from a day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, until death do them apart. They're supposed to be soulmates. This relationship can't be just casual. Get away from me with this. Oh, I like how they have normal couple problems. I can definitely relate to that. I don't expect to see them dying in each other's arms like Romeo and Juliet either. I just want more than talking about how bad of a cook Peter is. That doesn't cut it. Sorry. Not especially when it gets undercut with a robbery and an overdrawn bit about pants on the floor. It's embarrassing how scared they are of developing a real romantic relationship. Why bother if you have history of movies and comics doing the heavy lifting for you, right? Mary Jane Watson never shows affection for the men until the end of the game for no reason other than they're MJ and Peter, and you know, you're not supposed to question it. I never stopped wanting to. Wait a minute! Who are you? And there's the forced kiss. Okay, that's enough of that. Even Mary Jane's iconic line is forced in and doesn't sound right coming out of her mouth. Almost as if she's another character. Almost as if sharing the same name as your comic book counterpart does not make you one. Go get him, Tiger. My name is Jeff. Remember boys, to get a girl all it takes is finding a way to make her mad at you. I was more often led to believe Mary Jane is a self-centered egotist. No. No, I got myself into this. I'm getting myself out. What do you mean you got yourself into this? After Peter's fight with Mr. Negative at the central station, the two are separated. Mere seconds after the events, he tries to contact her. What does MJ do? She assumes he was trying to talk to her about their relationship and interprets the text. It's over as news that he is done with her. No, 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 not that kind of over. Scratch that. I do hate this character. Someone should throw her off a bridge just so we can snap her back to reality and help her notice how careless of a person she is. You think after a deadly face-off, a near high casualty event, where she along with many other hostages leave in the middle of the chaos, that her mind would be set on whether Peter is okay, you know, if he got hurt or anything of that sort. But no, it's always about her. Look guys, remember when you also texted a girl and she misinterpreted what you wrote? Congrats writers, you've succeeded at making her out into a narcissist. 
Why does she always have to make it about herself? I want to like this character. I really do. Every time I think there's still hope for her, it evaporates with the rest of her personality. Please say no, please say no. And then I still cling on to hope. <laughs> okay, okay. And then she gives you another reason to hate her. You could have told Peter or the police earlier you endangered all these people because of your sheer insecurity and pride. Should probably call Peter and let him know what I'm doing. Actually, scratch that. He'd probably just tell me to go home and chain myself to my laptop. That could be an interesting development for her, but the character is too self-unaware of how wrong she is, and the writing never plays to confront this in any real way. But hey, at least she's good for female yeah. empowerment. I think the writers could have made the romance work had they not made it so much about MJ's ego and career. When you get to the climax of the MJ subplot, you realize how much it has to do with those things than any other ones really. I'm sorry I screwed things up. It's just hard being the one who always gets saved. Hard being the one who always gets saved. You are so dumb. You are really dumb. Did you know? Sometimes I want to do the saving. I'm sorry I made you feel like you couldn't. Why are you apologizing? I'm still partners. Always. Thankfully, my man Miles saves us from more cringe. Maybe the reason why she's impulsive shouldn't be because she's sick of being the damsel in distress. Rather, that she too worries, and it's not fair. Peter thinks he's the only one who's in the position that can. We've seen him put the good of others over his own multiple times. It would be a fair criticism to have. It's not fair that you're supposed to engage in a relationship with someone that can't even ensure you that they'll come back. Imagine if this was her driving motivation and not whatever this is. Perhaps it could have made her character and their romance work better. You'd finally get an idea that, yeah, she's mad because she cares. She actually cares. Doesn't even mean you have to sacrifice the self-reliant and snazzy reporter personality. The reasoning could only add to the hero partner storyline. Think about it. Maybe she wants to team up with him so that maybe she can have more of a decision on his actions while they're both out there. So that maybe she can be there when he makes the decisions about putting his life at risk. But I guess it's not empowering enough, right? Hey, at least I tried making the kiss more digestible. Blech.